one of the best pure point guards in the NBA, Kenny Anderson. I say he's the best guard that I've seen as a high school performer. None of them dominated the way Kenny did. The second pick in the NBA draft, the New Jersey Nets select Kenny Anderson from Georgia Tech. A lot of people consider him the best point guard ever come out of New York City. His game was so much more advanced than most people, he could score and he could shoot. People find it really shockingly to believe that you're one of the greatest point guards I know, I in won. NBA history. I hope you know that. I was at a dysfunctional home, drug addicts, alcoholics, abusive. He had multiple women that he was building relationships with. But if he was in love with you, then he was like, oh, I want a baby with you. Kenny just had so many things going on with him, and I just did, I couldn't deal with it. He would have been a better basketball player had he not ever had a drinking problem. Bothers me every day at DUI, because I did let those kids down. No shortcuts in life is gonna catch up to you. And I feel honored to so come and speak to y'all. I think the measurement of a person is when things don't go right, how you act. It's difficult trying to figure out what it is to be selfless when you've been selfish your whole life. Basketball is easy, life is hard. Say cheese! Thanks so much. All right. Thank you. You guys just saw the trailer. Um, I got a chance to see the movie. It's great, fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. You just told me three and a half, four year process. Um, did, did you enjoy the process of actually making a film like this? I mean, how could you not enjoy following this guy yeah. around for three, four years? It, it was a blessing. It was a gift. Um, I'm not saying the process wasn't hard. It's, you know, it's making any documentary is a difficult process, but. I had my cameraman, Nelson Walker, was a huge fan of Kenny's, so he would sit there behind the camera with a smile on his face, and my editor, too. And it was almost like a, it took a village to make this. All these Kenny fans just gave me like their resources for free to get this made, so it was pretty awesome. Did you enjoy the process, Kenny, with the cameras, and how long did it take for you to feel like they weren't there? I wanted to tell my story, but no, I didn't sometimes. <laughs> you know, camera in your face every day, but it was therapy because I was going through a lot, and the documentary just, it just gave me some type of uh, balance to understand, you know, how did I get to that place? Yeah. And I think Jill Campbell, my director, I love her. She, 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 put the, she put the story together, and she put a great story together. So we have so much footage that we, even, we didn't even use. Yeah. The arc of the documentary is really interesting, and we talked about it before. Yeah. The way you start with the broken elements, family, the kids that you didn't get to spend a lot of time with, mm -hmm. and the way you go on through the documentary of how, at the end, it really feels like family is coming together. When you think about that, and I'll start with Kenny on this, was that a therapeutic thing? And, and how hard was it for you to be around the kids that didn't feel like they had you their whole life? Like I said, it's therapy. Uh, we all are work in progress. No means, the documentary is great, I'm, every day, I'm still trying to work it out with my kids. You know, I got eight kids. It bothers me that I wasn't in some of their lives when I played in the league. So I go to therapy, you know, once a week now just to deliver productive, you know, life, you know. And, and that's why I, one of the reasons I'm happy about the doc, because I wanted to show all the sides of a person. It's human file. You know, it's just human made me look human because NBA put you on a pedestal, you know, NCAA college. High school, I've been a prodigy my whole life, but I wanted to let everybody know, yo, I was doing all this on the court and all that, but I, I, I came home to this. This is how I dealt with real life issues. So I wanted to be a, a great message. Was he receptive, Jill, to some of this? And what were some of the issues you had with saying, maybe Kenny doesn't want to do this? I mean, he was receptive. I mean, the, you know, what's interesting with Kenny is, from, you know, you can't judge a book by, a, by its cover. There's so much going on with all of us on the inside. You look at Kenny, you look at his life. It could look storybook in certain ways, 14 years in the NBA, making millions. But then when you meet him and he's like, 
I'm in therapy, I was sexually abused, I had this really rough upbringing. For me, it was really intriguing to be like, okay, I wanna know this person. I wanna know what made him tick, what made him get to the greatness, but also what made, you know, what made him fail in, in certain instances too. But to answer your question, he would not do a retake, <laughs> which I love. Nah, no retake. So, we get it I now, we ain't doing it. Yeah, so it was like authentic. And I love that because we both kind of roll like that. We're both like impatient and like you had to get it. And if, we, if you asked for a retake, he would give me, you know, he would give me the business. So <laughs> I learned quickly. You know, if you go, for some people that don't know, just the, the and you talk about in the film how Kenny in the mid to late 80s, People saying, well, Kenny was like LeBron before LeBron, you know, Kobe. Obviously, we didn't have the social media and everything around it, but you were coming up in New York. You were the best point guard in the country. You go to Georgia Tech, and you go to the Final Four, and everything's just perfect. Then you're a high pick. Um, at what point for you, was it in high school, college, or early in the NBA, did you realize that you were having issues internally? Like I said, you know, everything lined up for me. You just said it. High school, four, four uh, all city years, yeah. two at Georgia Tech. Um, I was living, I was like, wow, could be no perfect. Well, I got to the NBA with the money and the politics and the, the agents, the lawyers, the f new friends. You know, I didn't know what the, I didn't know who to trust. I think, you know, two, three, four years in, it started getting to me. You know, it started really uh, putting a lot of pressure on myself and, um, I just, all my demons came out. You know, I just, you know, when I left Georgia Tech, it was, uh, and then coming back home, yeah. was a, it was great for me, right. but also like, wow, this was, um, I'm, a, I'm a trial prodigy. I was already famous in yeah. New York, and then you, you give me that. money, yeah. it, it just got out of hand, you know? You said you didn't want to go pro, but you felt like you had to, given the fact that you were going to be a really high pick. Yeah, they, my coach pushed push me out. I was like, I want to stay till my junior year. I was having too much fun, didn't need nothing, didn't want nothing. And then you fear what you don't know on the other end, you know. Um, but I was going one, two, or three in the draft. He said, you got to go, you know, take care of your family. And uh, I left. And um, it was great. Willis Reed drafted me to the Nets, and I was able to come back home and uh, play in front of my friends and my family. But also just, uh, I think, the lifestyle, you know, you know, I finally, you know, when I was young in Malloy and uh, growing up here, I ain't had no money. I couldn't come to the city to hang out. <laughs> now I had millions, and I'm like, I'm Kenny Anderson. So I'm coming into the city doing what I want to do. It was like a great, I was like, wow. You know, it was just, it was just crazy. I enjoyed myself. Had you not gone to the Nets, you think everything would have happened the same? I don't know. You know, I had to, I had to be that person to get to this person. We all do. So, I, I, you know, it's, who knows? You know, who knows? What, what was the balance for you, Jill, with balancing the issues that Kenny had with the greatness he had on the floor and everything around him? Because he's talking about during the movie how when he gets all this money, it's great, but now he's got to pay everybody else. You're trying to take care of everybody else. Yeah, I mean, like when I met him, he re really was in a midlife crisis. Yeah. And there were a lot of issues. And first I thought that was a fascinating place to start a documentary or a study of an athlete of Kenny's stature. And he really, he, he, was, he's, he was in therapy, he was looking for help. He really wanted to tell his story for the right reasons though. So the balance was like, he was really open. He knew, I, I gained his trust. I was not trying to take advantage of him. I was not, trying to make a reality TV show. I wanted to make a real portrait of what an NBA, play, NBA player goes through post-career. And Kenny was in because he really does want to give back because he's been given so much in his life. You know, and we, we've talked about that so much. And, and we talked a lot. We would talk about everything you know, before we would shoot scenes and, but you never, you know, what's great about shooting a verite doc is you never know what's gonna happen. So, <laughs> so we, we got a lot of really interesting, authentic I wanna scenes. see some of the footage that you didn't, 
You gotta have a, yeah, an no, outtake. No, you can't do that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't even know if I can I mention. Feel her. I feel so, her. No, there's no, some. No, I'm just I mean, and we've got some, some like Anthony Mason, yeah. Ooh, okay. uh, Pearl Washington. Yeah. Like, I want to do some outtakes yeah. on our website and show some of that footage because it's awesome. Kenny did a show that people could look up with Anthony Mason and Chris yeah. Gatling in Florida. We shot that, but we oh. we weren't allowed to use it. <laughs> well, it's an hour and a half. It's not a short film, yeah. but yeah, yeah, there are. Things I would like to see, so we'll talk. About I'll, that. I'll, I'll, I could get yeah. you some stuff. Um, Kenny, I know that you wanted in the film, obviously, to be an open book, mm -hmm. and we were just telling me how hard it was for you, especially with the woman in New Jersey, who I think you had two kids with. Yeah, and you were saying that was your mistress, and how. You, so, just give us a sense of what. I don't want to touch on that too much, yeah. but she was, you know, and I had two sons by her. She's a beautiful person. She raised my two sons. Did a hell of a job, great job, but um, just, you know, that was just emotions at the time, yeah. um, what I was going through, and, um, you know, we moved on, but, you know, my mother always used to say, you know, I, I, I was, I had eight kids, and she used to kill me, get mad at me, <laughs> but then she used to turn around and say, did you have fun making those eight kids? <laughs> I said, yes, mom. <laughs> so now you got to pay for them and right. take care of them. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was it's life lesson to learn. At the end of the film, because you mentioned your mother, I want to go to that. Yeah. You go to her, her graveside, and you have a very open, wonderful conversation with her. And you talk about going back to school. What was the process of getting this done and, and making that feel natural and allowing Kenny to feel comfortable? So I, I mentioned it to Kenny early on, but Kenny had not been back to the gravesite since his mother had passed away. It was a really sensitive topic, and, and he said he would think about it. And then every time he came to New York, I'd be like, what do you think? Because right. I really thought his mother is the key to his story. And in the mo movie, he, he kind of comes to terms with his relationship with his mother. So the, um, the gravesite scene was really, really pertinent and I really I essential to get. And then one day he's like, I'll do it. And it was just me and my partner, cameraman, like I didn't want to, I never like to have a big crew because you just want to get the intimacy and you want the trust there. So we just, we went there and, you know, it's really, it's heartbreaking for me to watch the scene. It's, um, it was, as a human, I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking to yeah. film. Kenny, um, what made you change your mind to feel like you could put that on camera? We, we, I do it all the time. I talk to my mother. You know, you know, we all do, you know, we miss our family members and we just be in a room. And I just said, I'm gonna go, go to her. You know, I'm gonna go to the grave. I don't do it. I never, every time I come, I don't do the grave thing. It's, it's, uh, it's very hard for me, but my mother meant the world to me. She was my motivation. Yeah. I didn't have a plan B. My plan A was like, just take care of my mother so she can have a 20 year carefree life. And I did that. And, I, and that's why I'm rebuilding and, paying it forward and trying to get my life together now. But before it was just my mother, my mother, my mother. So I got tired of her crying and struggling and not knowing where we was gonna live, not knowing where we was gonna eat. So that, my mother meant the world to me. I got the sense, especially as the film progressed, that you feel like you have a responsibility, not just to your kids, but to so many other kids out there to tell them what not to do and also how to do the things the right way. I was just blessed, man. I'm just blessed, top of blessings. I, I always say I'm lucky and blessed at the same time. I'm right here from Queens, Left Rack City. I, um, I had mentor Vincent Smith and Jack Curran. I had all these great men in my life who saved me. Yeah. And I, I thank God. I wake up every morning like, wow. I could have been in jail. I could be back in Left Rack stealing, doing whatever to make it. And I, I'm not. So I'm like, I have to I have an obligation to somebody else out there to help because someone helped me. And I, I just feel it in my heart, I'm passionate about it. And I just think the youth, they need me more. You know, I could or teach a crossover, a jump shot, or tell you how to play ball, that's good. But let me tell you about life, man, I experienced it. Let me, don't go, don't go down this road, go, go this path. And, and that's what I think my calling is. And I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing and um, I'm just blessed. Uh, is that, when you were making the film and you see Kenny going back to Arch Archbishop Malloy, where he went to high school, uh, going back, going to Arizona State with Coach Hurley and watching the game tape and talking to their kids. Um, did that feel like 
really natural when Kenny's talking to these kids and they're listening to him and saying, that's Kenny Anderson, look, look how he did things, you know? It was completely natural. Like, we, we just went and visited, like, with LaFrac. We were, like, we're filming there. We got permission to go. And then all of a sudden, everyone from the neighborhood came out. People were standing on balconies. People were coming up to him. Um, at Malloy, too, Kenny, who, you know, just rolls and you've got to follow him. We walk into the cafeteria. We're supposed to walk through the front door. All the boys, the kids are having lunch. They start screaming. They, it's in the, you know, it's in the film. Yeah. They're, they're like going nuts, you know, they're clapping. It was like this Hollywood moment and we got it. And it was all authentic. He walks in the gym. This is That's my gym. My yeah. gym. And yeah. it wasn't planned. Like yeah. we're just following him. And this, those speeches are the speeches that he gives to kids and they're real. I mean, he is not sugarcoating things. And, and it's awesome because we can learn from this. How many people are truthful about what Kenny's truthful about? Like he's so brave to do this. And it's such an honor to just, just point the camera at him, at him and, and share it. And well, we're all learning. I learned from him. I learned as an artist following him. And um, sports and the arts are very similar, you know, so, and we, we related on that too. So. Was that, when you were talking to kids, did, was there anything off camera where you'd have a kid come up to you and maybe say, I really appreciate that? Like, what did that mean to you when, when you could? Well, we did, like in the film, we have this adorable uh, kid that came up to Kenny and he was like, you know, African American men don't really speak to the youth like that. We really need role models like you, and we were all crying like that. It's just a be beautiful moment, and we just got we found that in the footage. Like that was just off to the side. Like we were shooting something else, and my cameraman just happened to get that moment. We were just really it was just this very authentic spur of the moment moment. So what what would be sub is coaching Kenny? Because I know you did it, and then at the high school level, is it coaching? Is it mentoring, speaking, what, what would be the next step for you to feel like you're giving back the way you need? I think mentoring and um, just life coach, you know what I mean? I thought, this was four years ago, thought I wanted to coach, but I'm not sure about coaching basketball. I coach my travel team and I train kids at, at, the, at the clinic, my gym in Tampa, but I don't know if I want to be on a, a sideline. Yeah. I just, I think I want to, I think more people in the world need me, you know what I mean? And um, I just want to give myself to them and try to help like I said, a therapy, you know, I, don't, I, I went back to school and got my bachelor's, but then you got to go get master's and all that for psychology, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I don't think I'm that deep right now into that, but I think I could help, you know, adults, youth, just give it back, like a life coach. And I think, and the main thing, and I'll say this, I just want to, I'm fortunate that I can take a job, the one, the one job I want, and not have to take a job just for a check. So that's, that's my, and that's my, that's what I want to do. I want to be passionate. I want to get up in the morning, go to work, and know I'm feeling something. I'm, I'm making a difference in somebody's life this morning. That's the, I just, that's going to get me up and going. Yeah, because the, the men that we that you speak with in the film, whether it's Coach Crimmins or Coach, you know, you see in Coach Curran back in the day, it, a lot of it's people saying, well, Kenny, you know, he could give you the X's and O's and teach basketball, but from a coaching perspective, this is also from maybe even not coaching, the ability to relate to people, because that's the bigger theme here, yeah. helping other others. Like David Falk was yeah. like, you could yeah. be a life coach. And it's interesting David because- Falk, Big agent. Big agent, he's Michael Jordan's agent, and he was Kenny's agent um, when, when Kenny was in the NBA. He got Kenny $50 million contract with the Portland Trailblazers. Um, but we, I started and I was like, oh, maybe I'm gonna follow him on like this journey to become a coach. And then halfway through, I looked at him and I was like, do you really want to become a coach? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, because you get your joy from giving back and not being- Not just the basketball. Not yeah. just the basketball. And yes, he coaches the AAU and he's an awesome coach, but he also played 14 years already in the NBA. Like he already, he did his job. Like a lot of people put pressure on you, like, become a coach, do this. But so it was interesting to see him find that during this whole process. And, and he's continuing to find that. It, it's awesome. So is it safe to say that the three and a half, four year process, it was enjoyable? Was it, um, you know, how hard was it? How much joy did you get from the whole process, both of you? Um, it, was, it was great. It, like I said, therapy, you know what I mean? I, 
going back into my life, you know, being a child prodigy and even with the molestation and abuse, I'm able to talk about it and feel good about my, I, I used to, I, you know, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, you know, I got to get it out. You know, I'm, I'm helping people. I walk around. People say, yo, you're an inspiration. And me, I look at, I'm like, when I go home, I'm like, me? Little kid from Left Rack City? Didn't have nothing, came from nothing. And I'm helping somebody. It's, uh, I get emotional. It's like, wow. When you think about Jill, Kenny opening up and talking about the abuse, how hard was that for you as a filmmaker to go into? It was really hard, and I, I took a while before I approached that with him because, you know, it, it, it was tough, and I didn't, again, like, if he didn't want to go there in the film, we weren't going to go there. You know, he's a human being first, and his story is so fabulous to tell, but we also, like, when he did, he wanted to share it because it's a horrible thing that happened to him, and we've already, already had people come up to us and tell us that, that he's helped them, and we're also working with an organization called One in Six that helps abused men. So we're we're giving back, we're we're doing outreach, and that's what this is about. Like, so it was hard. Um, again, like I made sure it was just a very intimate setting of just me and the cameraman when we shot that scene, and I just took Kenny's lead, yeah. and um, yeah. And that's the thing about basketball that. The, the theme, the overarching theme of the film, can you can see. First of all, it's not, when I watched it, I thought it was going to be a basketball movie. Yeah, yeah. It. It's not really, yeah. I mean, basketball is prevalent, yeah. but it's not really a basketball movie. There's, there's so much about life and experience and people and emotions. That's the beauty of the film. Thank you. You know, and it's very hard to do. There's a lot of documentaries that fail at that or movies. Uh, so thank you. I mean, really, it's a fantastic movie. Thank you. Um, so tell everybody it's 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 at, it's at IFC this week. Yeah. Um, um, and it's the website mrchips.com. Yeah, it's at IFC all week. It's playing through Tuesday night. Then we're getting a limited release around the country, and then hopefully after that, it'll you know be on VOD somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's been it's been a pleasure. Like I started in the theater, and I work with classic structure, and I just try to put that on. Well, the that's film. that's what it is, you know. But it's <laughs> yeah. also not. It's not scripted. It's not yeah, forced. No, it's, it's, it's just a it's a wonderful piece yeah. of, of art, really. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, appreciate it, Kenny. It's a great thank story. You. Thank you. Yeah, let, let's open the audience yeah. up. Questions? Yes. Hi, Kenny. It's nice to see you. I wanted to know throughout your career, is there anything that you've learned through the NBA and through life, and uh, what was some of the things that you're most proud of through your career? Oh, I'm not the first. I'm proud of going back to school after 20 years, getting my bachelor's. That's the hardest thing I did in my life because I didn't think I could be a, go back to school after, you know, the fame, the money, and being a, a, a manny, staying at home with my kids, going back to class, going home, doing projects. Some nights I used to be in there doing a project. I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, it was, but I, I went back. That's one of the things. And uh, the NBA was great. But it, it, uh, it makes you um, learn a lot of different life lessons, man, dealing with finances. That I, you, go to, for instance, you go to school for math, physics, all this, but nobody's teaching you how to invest like your money and to be frugal and just financial literacy, you know? So I, I had that, in, and I was a great student, but I wasn't good with money. So, you know what I mean? I lose, a, a lot of money went out. I lost a lot of money, but I still kept some money. So I didn't lose my shirt. So, you know, friends, um, who you trust, who you can't trust, you know, you learn a lot of different things. And that's what I wanted my documentary to be, just to come out and be open and raw. Wasn't sure at the time, but I said, I got to do this. I kept fighting myself. You know, I got to do this because it's other kids out there that needs this. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be um, selfless, give myself to them. They need it. And, and that's what happened. Thank, thank, you, thank you guys for being here. So for you, Kenny, uh, what, 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 how was your mental approach when you uh, before you played basketball? How, how, how was the psychological effects before you played the game? Uh, and also, uh, what, was, what was the uh, special advice you, you was giving to in your career? Um, I just played basketball. I loved the basketball game. I loved it. But like I said, I go back. My mother was my mentor, my, my motivation. So it was just basketball was a tool to make some money so I could take care of my mother. So I, I never... I, Anything came between that wasn't happening. 
you know, my, the peer pressure. I didn't. I just wanted to work hard to make it to the NBA, and I did that. And my mother lived a carefree life for 20 years. And advice at the end is just like build your brand. Any one of you in the corporate, build your brand while you're in there, because once you leave, yeah. the door is hard to open. They, they go, you know. Fifth Avenue, NBA office over there. I can't call. It's hard to get through. <laughs> they, yo, Kenny Hensover, I play for the I, I got an idea. I'm trying to do this. Well, it's 10, 20 more Kenny Andersons. So it's hard. And that's what I'm doing now. And I learned it. I get it. But you got to learn early how to build bridges so you could be- go back over there across some easier. But now I'm rebranding myself at 40 something years old. I should have did that years ago. But it's been great, man. Yeah, you, you, you hit that in the movie about how you go see a, a financial person and, and he's saying, you know, there's seven other Kenny Andersons that are 20 years old yeah. that are coming up, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's when you need to learn it, yeah. when you're in it. Yeah. One more question. Hey, Kenny, my name yeah. is Chanel. Yeah. I just want to thank you, first of all, for your transparency and your honesty. And I want to thank you for the, the tears you almost shed. Yeah, I can see you holding back. And um, I just want to say that keeps you human. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So keep that because a lot of people are desensit- desensitized now. And I wanted to ask you in efforts, you say you went therapy. How receptive has that been in restoration with all of your eight children? Oh, it's great. You know, um, Dr. Marilyn, she's out there Wednesday. She called me like, where you at? I'm in New York. I can't go. I can't go. So <laughs> when I'm like on the wire, you know, I'm traveling in the hotel room and all that. My mind is going crazy. So I'll just call her. So it's it's therapeutic, man. My life, my life is eight kids dealing with my oldest one now, 26. She going through issues, 24 going through issues. They, they know the documentary is out. So it's it's, it's hard. It's the everyday uh, grind. I'm not perfect. The, the, just, I'm a work in progress. We all are. So I'm just trying to I, I could care less about somebody else's opinion about me. I'm trying to take care of my family and, and do do right by me. That's it. Kenny Anderson, Bill, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Go see this movie. Okay. Really great. Thank you. Right.